I guess also a good bounce back after kind of a slow start, poor effort last game. How did you feel about how they transitioned into this game? Pretty good. We were pretty locked in. Um, we had a great practice yesterday. Um, I think we were really locked in today in our meeting this morning. Um, and then we came in the game locked in. You know, the thing we wanted to do differently from last game was pick up the pressure and make them feel us a little bit more than we did to start the last game. And uh, I think we did that pretty well. Coach, what was your impression of Aaron Neesmith joining the team and playing his first game? Yeah, I mean, he hasn't even been able to practice or do anything. So he's joining a group that, you know, he has spent almost zero time with. Um, and so I was really impressed with the start. Um, he's picked up on pretty much everything that we're doing. Obviously, I think his experience in the NBA and playing a lot of minutes already has helped him with that transition. We were up big and he was like, can I stay in a little bit longer? <laughs> he's like itching to play. And so um, it's always exciting when you have a guy like that that wants to play, that's ready to play. And uh, I think he did a good job. How much have you gotten to know him? How much did he know about him? Um, not a ton. Um, I, I have a good relationship with Brad Stevens, and so I've talked to Brad about him a good bit um, uh, with the trade, and so that's pretty much my knowledge of him. Um, but we spent a little bit of time um, once he got out here and got to spend a little time with him. So uh, we're getting to know him better. We'll know him better as, as we uh, complete summer league. What did Brad tell you about him? Just a great guy. I mean, just a salt of the earth guy um, and a good player. Um, you know, even over the years when we've had conversations, just, you know, random conversations, he's always talked about how good of a guy and how good of a player Neesmith is. And so to get a guy like that, that, you know, a guy I really respect, likes, um, it's a good thing for us. What's with Isaiah? You're seeing just a little bit of everything from him. Yeah, I always tell, I, I told our guys in practice too, like, he does things that are not normal. Um, with his athleticism and you, you, you're around him enough and you see him enough that you start to think that it's like it's a normal thing and like we just can't normalize what Isaiah does, like the impact that he has on the game, his athleticism, his ability to block shots, his ability to finish at the rim. Like he's doing a lot of really good stuff and has a great impact on our team. He's had about the best, you know, two, two and a half weeks that I've seen, you know, in his career so far. So he's been a lot of fun to coach and, you know, he's got a lot of good stuff left in him. Seems like Ben too took a little bit more command, a little bit more assertiveness. Is that him, or is that you guys saying, "Hey, do more"? I guess. No, that's him. I think okay. that's just you know this was his third game. He's getting used to what the game looks like. I think after a good camp, you know, and he's coming in after his second game. He's seeing what you know what defenses do. He's able to read matchups a little bit better. He's able to know what spots he can be successful with this team, with and uh, mm -hmm. and he's picking those spots well. And he's you know can get any shot off at any time. Andrew and MR didn't really stuff the stat sheet, I think only six points and two assists, but what, what's he still doing out there to, in a positive way that, that still uh, allows you guys to, to pull out to a, a big lead like that when he's not stuffing stat sheet? Yeah, everything, yeah. really. I mean, um, his ability to, well, the one thing that we talked about today was him picking up the ball full court. I mean, he's such a good defender. His ability to get into the ball, make other point guards feel him is pretty high level. Um, and he did that really well right from the beginning today. Um, that's what we talked about. He was our anchor in that, making him feel this. And then on the offensive end, he just settles us down. He gets us into things that we need to get get, uh, get into. He communicates plays. Like, you know, I don't even call half the plays. I just let him do it, and he does it pretty well. How coachable has he been the last uh, week or two? Amazingly. Like, he's, he's just a good guy. Um, he loves basketball. That's the thing that I like about him. He just loves basketball. Um, you know, even texting with him, you know, before the game today, he just has some good feedback about what he can do to be better, what we need to do to be better, um, because he studies the game and he loves the game. Wash has been uh, a guy that's probably hadn't quite settled in yet. He's also played multiple roles, starting, not starting, then starting, not starting again. Yeah. What more do you need to see from him? How can you help him settle in a little bit? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, Wash is a guy that can really get hot and get going at any time. Um, I think, you know, from a coaching standpoint, we can do a better job and I can do a better job of helping him Put, help put him in positions to be successful. So whether that's calling certain plays for him um, or, you know, drawing up certain plays for him, I think, you know, I need to do that a little bit better so that he feels comfortable. Um, but like you said, it's difficult. Like he goes first game, he doesn't start, he starts last game and comes off the bench again today. Um, so it's a hard role to be in. Um, it's something that he embraces because that's, that's the NBA, you know, like <laughs> when you're a role player, things can just change on the drop of a, a, the drop of a dime. So he's embracing that and uh, I think he'll be better as we go on. And then with Aaron, how do you, make that transition with him, meaning over the last few days, coaches sit with him, watch film. I know you're big into that. Yeah. How did you try to help it while, help him while also not loading him up with all kinds of information? Yeah, you can't give him too much because then he will retain nothing. Um, <laughs> so we've just tried to get him, you know, the basic things that we do, just basic concepts on both ends of the floor. And it's mostly come through film. Um, he was able to sit in our meeting today and we were able to talk through some concepts. We did a little walkthrough in the hotel, um, but it's going to come with time. I mean, 
you know, we're going to practice in a couple of days. We have, you know, a game after our practice. So after he gets that practice in and, you know, he hears us go through it and gets the habits, then he'll be fine because he's, like I said, he's played enough minutes. Because of his newness, did you have any expectation for him today or is it more just try to settle in himself and whatever he produces as bonus? Yeah, it was pretty, it was, I think it was pretty much that. Like we just wanted him to join the team, feel good with the team, wanted the team to feel good about him, you know, not try to overdo anything because, it's you know, it's kind of like, showing him too much film. We overload him, he, he just will be paralyzed out there. So it was better for us to just let him be him, let him play. We're also learning about him, right? So we're trying to watch him, see what he does well in the context of what we're doing. And, uh, you know, we'll be doing that over the next couple games. How do you spend the next two days with breaks? Is it a day off and then practice? Yeah, we'll do a day off, practice, and then we'll play again. Were you anticipating getting moved? Did you have a feel that that was possible? Uh, no, I was completely caught off guard. I was golfing. You were? Yeah, I was golfing and uh, it was on the sixth hole. I was playing pretty decent. Okay. And uh, I got the phone call, messed my day up. I only played one, one more hole and I called it a day. Yeah. <laughs> Who was the phone call from? Um, Brad Stevens. Mm -hmm. What was just kind of the general message from him? Um, appreciated my time there. Uh, you know, they, he believed in me and uh, that it would be a great opportunity for me uh, going forward. You obviously getting your first opportunity with the Pacers here. Was it? A little nerve-wracking or unfam with unfamiliar guys and a system you're not familiar with? Uh, yeah, it was definitely uh, a little bit challenging not being able to practice or uh, do anything beforehand, like before today. So um, it was fun, though, just being able to go out there, play free, play with the guys, and uh, learn as we go. Um, had a couple turnovers early. Cause I, I, <laughs> yeah, it was just a little nerves, but uh, yeah, it was fun. From your conversations with the front office, Rick, whomever you've spoken with, what what are you what have they told you about your role and your fit here? Uh, just play free, uh, be a good three and D guy, and uh, I know I could be a top notch three and D guy in this league. So that's the focus. Um, that's what we're gonna work towards, and that's what I'm gonna become. And when you look back on your two years in Boston, I'm sure it didn't go exactly how you wanted it to. But just what was kind of your takeaway from your time there? Uh, I learned a lot. You know, I learned that winning in this league is very challenging. I learned what it takes to win in this league. You know, uh, being able to be a part of a finals run, make it to the playoffs both of my years, um, get some playoff experience. So um, hopefully I could bring that over here to uh, Indiana and kind of show the other young guys uh, what it takes to win and that nothing's going to be given to you uh, here. You said after the season you kind of needed to get away from basketball for a little bit, clear your mind. How did that go and just sort of what things were you doing over the last month or so? Yeah. Um, I just took a step back. Um, took a step back with the mirror, uh, reevaluated everything that I needed to, and um, created more clear cut game plan goals uh, for myself and what I wanted for this upcoming season, um, and where I see myself from the beginning to the end. Um, and uh, the main thing I did to get away was just golfing. I just golfed and then went to the gym, and that was it. Well, what are some of those goals you have or thoughts that came out of that time? Uh, be the best be one of the best 3 and D players in the league, um, become a better overall basketball player, get my shooting percentage back to where it is, where I know it's supposed to be, um, and becoming one of the best teammates that I can be. And how helpful is it to have Daniel coming over with you? Have you talked to him at all since uh, I haven't talked to DT, um, but it's definitely going to be helpful to have familiar faces around and not just come in by myself. But um, it's going to be fun. Yeah, I'm very excited. Um, and I, just, I can't wait for the regular season to start and to get started in Indy. Specific question, but what course were you playing? Oh, I was playing uh, the Muni in Charleston, South Carolina. Okay. It's like, yeah. What's your handicap? Nah, I don't know. Not that yeah. good. Not that <laughs> no, good no, no, no. We're no good. We're no good. We're learning. <laughs> yeah, we're learning. <laughs> gotcha. What do you think about the trio of lottery picks now? That's kind of cool. The, the 2020 yeah. guys, 10, 12, and 14 here. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Um, yeah, 10, 12, and 14. Three, the lottery picks of 2020. That's going to be a pretty, pretty fun, pretty cool story going forward. Um, and hopefully, we can do something special together. Do you have any relationships with guys on the team pre-existing coming into this, or is it all? Uh, I mean, new? I've known, I've, I've known of them. I've talked to them in passing, but no, not really. Um, my draft year, everything was remote because of COVID, so I didn't really get the time to compete with each other in pre-draft workouts or do no group stuff together. What have been your first impressions of uh, Andrew Nemhard, point guard, playing with him and uh, getting to know him? Yeah, I love him. I played him in college my freshman year at Vandy when he was at Florida. Um, pass first guy, defender, 
gritty dog. I love it. Uh, he's going to be very fun to play with, and I think he does a great job of controlling the pace of the game. I think you and Andrew have a coaching comment. Uh, Roger Powell was, yeah. was Roger there at Dandy mm -hmm. with you. Have you guys talked about Roger, shared any good stories? No, we haven't talked about Roger yet. Yeah. Uh, no, nah, but we talked about uh, our college routes today. So, yeah. Um, how much will you appreciate and value this opportunity? Because that seemed like you didn't have that, maybe lost confidence or, you know, whatever in everything. How much has this new situation can kind of give you a fresh start? I'm just, I'm excited. Like I said, I'm just very excited for the opportunity and the team that's in front of me. Um, and I just got to go out there and do what I, I know I can do. And that's pretty much it. We saw you courtside with, you know, I think it was Jalen, Tyrese, and those guys. What were, what were those conversations like? And were you just kind of getting to know some of them? Yeah, we just trying, I was just, squad? just trying to get to know those guys, watching the uh, other guys play, and just having fun and building relationships. Were you able to work out with those guys while you were in town? Yeah, yeah, I was able to get in the gym with those guys a little bit. 